This video is brought to you by Storyblocks. What up you guys, it's Janik from Cinecam.net and welcome to Copycat Friday. It's a series where we recreate effects from famous movies and music videos. And today, we're having a look at three more effects from the music video Sicko Mode by Travis Scott featuring Drake. But today, we are going to do things differently because Jordi is still on vacation together with his girlfriend Kim, but I'm sure that they are missing us. Isn't that right? Hmm, that hurts. Guys, I'm not supposed to be in this video. I mean, look around me. I got better things to do. Anyway, since there's a camera on me now, I'd like to make a quick shout out to Storyblocks, our channel sponsor. Storyblocks is an online library where you can find After Effects templates, stock footage, transitions, video effects, and a ton more. Now, I'm currently in Iceland making a beautiful travel video, and a lot of the shots that I'll be taking here will also be published to their library. So if you already have a membership, you can just download them when they are available. And if you aren't a member yet, well then definitely make sure to check it out by clicking the first link in the description below. Walk further, Jordi. As for today, we're again having a look at Seiko Mode from Travis Scott and Drake. Because last week we showed you how to do two hyperlapse effects and a slanting effect. In this video, we are recreating another three effects. But this time, it's all gonna be in Premiere Pro. But first, let's build a nice set. giving the cars an extra touch, uh, we're going to put these speculars from Spiffy Gear under our car so you get that neon look like all those tuned cars from Need for Speed and Fast and the Furious. In the Sicko Mode music video, there is a certain effect named data mushing. This is an effect where the data of the footage is manipulated in order to achieve this kind of glitchy pixel transition. Now, we are going to recreate this transition with Premiere Pro and an additional software. If you want to create a good data mushing effect, you have to create motion in your shot. Either do this with a camera movement or you can do it in post-production, like we are going to do. This way, the mushing will be intenser and the effect will come out better. In the music video, you can also see two kinds of data mushing. One where everything mushes and one where a person is cut out. We are going to explain the one where the person is cut out because the other one works exactly the same. For the one with the person cut out, we are going to use a green screen in the same scene that you are putting your subject. Try to match the lighting as good as possible so it really looks like he's standing in the scene. Shoot your actor in front of the green screen and then shoot your background without the actor. Now let's get into Premiere Pro. From the project panel, drag the clip from Janik into the timeline. On this, we are going to add a pre-glitch. So go to your effects panel and look for the turbulent displacement effect. From the effects control panel, you can set the displacement to horizontal displacement. Then scroll to almost the end of the clip and enable the animation for the amount. And set this to zero. Go to the end and decrease it to 350. Now we're going to set the other parameters, so stick with me. Set the size to 53, the offset to 1082 by 366, the complexity to 10, the evolution to 187, and the random C to 94. I know that was fast, but normally you already got a cool pre-glitch. After this, you can put the background on track number one and your green screen shot on track number two. Then go to the opacity properties in the effects control panel. You want to click on the pen tool, which you can use to create a mask. Roughly create a mask around the actor to remove your surroundings. After you have done this, look for the ultra key effect in the effects panel, drag that to your green screen clip, and with the color picker, you can then select the green to remove it. Now you have your actor standing in your scene. Simple as that. Nest everything together and add a simple zoom in to add some movement. You can do this by animating the scale from 100 to 105. Sadly, you can data mash in Premiere Pro, so we have to use a different software named Data Mash Studio. This is a free software which you can use for data mashing and you can download it through the link in the description below. Before we can start with the moshing, we have to have two clips to mosh it all together and create a transition. That's why we have to render out our two clips that we just made. This has to be done one by one. Now you're probably thinking, why the green screen then? Well, we'll come back to that later. After you have two clips, you can start up the Data Mosh Studio. It will ask you to open a project or create one. Just simply create a new one and create a new folder for it. I'm going to do this on my desktop so I can easily find it back later. When this is done, adjust the width and the height to 1920 by 1080. 
and click save. On the top right, you can then import your two videos you want to mosh. This has to be done one by one. When locating your footage, it can be that you don't see your footage in your folder. I had the same issue, but it can be fixed easily. Adjust the format on the right bottom corner to the one from your footage. And now you will see all your clips. Select the one you want and click import. Double click on your clip that has to come first. You can then insert it in the timeline through the panel in the right bottom corner. Set the starting and end frame and press insert. Do the same for your second clip, but check the delete iframe checkbox from now on. Of course, you can add as many clips as you want. Just don't forget to delete the iframes. After you have done this, set the beginning of the iframe box above the timeline to your begin clip. Now you can hit the export tab on the left bottom corner and press export. After it's done exporting, you can hit the play button under the export tab and check out what you have created. Fine tune if necessary, if not, the program already rendered it in the folder you specially created for this. Let's get back into Premiere Pro and import your data mosh clip. Create a new sequence with the data mosh video on the first track. Now you have a data mosh effect where everything glitches. But we want to cut out Lorenzo so that he stops glitching earlier. That is where the green screen shot comes in. Place the green screen shot on top of the data mosh clip, sync them both, then trim the green screen shot to where you want it to start. Go into your effects control panel and to the opacity properties. Enable the animation for the opacity and let it start at zero. Go a few frames further in time and change it to 100. Another thing you can do is let the data mosh background fade back to the regular background. Just place your background on the same track as a data mosh, make a cut in the data mosh background where you want it to end, and place a regular background against it. Add a cross dissolve if necessary. Whew! I hope you all got that, because it will give a very cool transition effect if done right. Very cool indeed. But now, let's dive straight into the second effect, which is going to be these moving overlays you can see right here in the Seiko Mode music clip. You can do this effect on every shot you want, but we are going to use our background and green screen shot again to make it ourselves easier. Back in Premiere Pro, you want to place your background on track number one. On top of that, we're going to place a stock clip which we got from Storyblocks. Once you have placed your stock clip on the second track, create a small rectangle mask from the top to the bottom, starting from the left side. In the opacity property, you can set its feather to zero. Then go to the timeline and make a cut after three frames. In the clip after that cut, you need to adjust your mask so that the left side is aligned with the right side of the mask of the previous clip. Do this until you reach the middle of your shot. You can always make your shot smaller towards the end so it will end right in the middle. Then we are going to add a second stock clip above the first stock clip. But what you now want to do is make all the cuts first and then one by one copy the opacity properties from the track below to the new stock clip. After you have done this, you want to offset the entire track three frames so that it starts when the first stock clip is already one step further. Do this process another six to seven times so that you can see a cool animation of moving masks. I know it's a tedious job, but it will give a very cool effect. Once you are done with this, you can nest it all together and now you have one clip with the mask animations. The next thing to do is duplicating your nested sequence as many times as you want. Position them on the timeline on the point where your previous animations of the mask opens up on the left side. When doing this, you'll create an endless loop of moving masks. Now again, nest everything together. Make a duplicate of this nested sequence and in the effects panel, search for flip horizontal. Add this to the top nested sequence and now you have moving masks on both sides. The only thing you now have to do is go to the effects control panel and in the opacity properties, set the blending mode to screen. You can also adjust the opacity to around 40%. And before we forget, add your green screenshot to the top. Voila, there you have it. A cool moving mask background. Okay guys, I know it's a lot of information, but hold on just a little longer, because the next effect will be a short and easy one, but with a super awesome result. We're going to recreate this 2D, 3D effect from the music clip. The most important thing of the effect is the camera movement you do. This will determine the outcome of the effect. We film it on a wide angle lens, so you can go really close to your subject. When doing this, you will create a bigger parallax effect without moving your camera too much. Let your subject stand still, except for one element, like his hands or even his eyebrow. Then while filming, do a small movement to one side. This can be up or down or to the sides. Easy as that. Fire up Premiere Pro again and now import your footage into a new sequence. Then look for the wanted starting position and make a cut there. Go a few frames further in time and again make a cut where your movement ends. Delete everything else. When you only have your short clip of your movement, duplicate it on the same track right next to the original. Right click on the duplicate and look for speed and duration. Check the reverse speed checkbox and that's it. You can now nest these two together and duplicate them as much as you want to create a longer effect. Just like this. And that was it for today, guys. 
I know it was much, but I hope you enjoyed it and learned everything you wanted to learn. Thank you, Storyblocks, for the support. And, and as, as always, always, stay creative. Let Callum Lorenzo! Let Callum! Ben Dobni, man! Data! Lolo! Lorenzo! 187? Woo! That got snell! <laughs>